Welcome to all of you. It's great that you're joining us here in our pre-recorded virtual service from Maple Grove United Church in Oakville, Ontario. I'm the Reverend Kerry Stover, in ministry with the wonderful and gracious folks here at Maple Grove. We're pleased that you're with us this morning. It is wonderful to come in and give thanks and praise to God, for whom all blessings flow. Just a few announcements before we begin this service. First of all, this is Thanksgiving Sunday. We're asking you to please stay safe, keep well, wear your face masks, wash your hands, and physically distance. We know it's difficult at this time because we're distant from our family and friends due to public health uh, requests and our premier of, province, of this province as well. Our second announcement is that next week we will start our stewardship campaign. And so look for more information about that on next Sunday's recording. And thirdly, we have to announce that there will be an annual congregational meeting for Maple Grove United Church right after the regular service time at, at approximately 11 a.m. Now this will be done via Zoom. And so we invite you as members and adherents to participate in the annual congregational meeting where we'll review what we've accomplished this year, even though it's been an odd year for all of us, the budget and the financial results for the year 2019 to 2020. We look forward to seeing you on the 25th. And now let us prepare for worship by listening to the prelude as played by Aaron Rosen. Thank you. 
Friends, we've gathered together in Christ's name. I light our first candle, the Christ candle, to remember that the light always prevails over the darkness. I light our second candle, thinking of those members of our families and our friends that we won't be able to be with this Sunday, this weekend, due to the requests of our premier and our public health units to stay at home. And our third candle is lit for all those who may not be at a table this Thanksgiving, who are finding it difficult to find the food to eat, to find enough food to sustain themselves. We light this in hope that they will find Christ's light, that they will find refreshment at a table. Let us say responsibly our call to worship. I'll read the part of one, and I invite you to read the part of all. Give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. God crowns the year with bounty. Pastures of the wilderness overflow. The hills come alive with abundance. Valleys deck themselves with grain. They shout and sing together for joy. Let us give thanks for the mighty works of the Lord and declare all of God's blessings. Let us praise God together for all God's goodness to us. Let us join our hearts and minds together in prayer. Generous and loving God, you are the first and the last, the giver of all good things. Your glory is endless, your power incomparable. Your love stretches wider than the universe. Your mercy reaches beyond the heights of heaven. We gather with hearts thankful for the abundance of your creation to worship and adore you. Inspired by this time of worship on this Thanksgiving Sunday, may our hearts overflow with praise each and every day. And may our lives reflect our gratitude to you in the ways we share your abundant love with those that we meet. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now let us join our voices in a song of praise. Come, you thankful people, come. From Voices United, number 516.
The first reading is Psalm 106, verses 1 through 5, a confession of Israel's sins. Praise the Lord. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Who can utter the mighty doings of the Lord or declare all his praise? Happy are those who observe justice, who do righteousness at all times. Remember me, O Lord, when you show favor to your people. Help me when you deliver them, that I may see the prosperity of your chosen ones, that I may rejoice in the gladness of your nation, that I may glory in your heritage. God's word for our everyday living. The second reading is from Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 4, verses 1 to 9. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm for the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge Eudoia and I urge Sintiche to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, Whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me and the God of peace will be with you. God's word for God's people. Oh, you sing so. 
Thanks, Tom and Al, for those readings, and to the chancel choir for a very appropriate meditative uh, choral music that they've provided today under the direction of Dr. Deborah Henry and Aaron Rosen. Thank you. Now, friends, I invite you to pray with me. God of all blessings, take my words and speak through them. Take our ears and hear through them. Take our hearts and set them on fire with love for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, aren't the fall colors very vibrant this year? A magnificent patchwork of color that is seen in our neighborhoods, on the escarpment, anywhere you go on your daily outings or weekly outings. The colors of nature, the wonder of God's creation as we take part in this world and we get this experience of the change of seasons. And I don't know about you, but I find that they're more vibrant this year than I've experienced for several years. Now, in many parts of the world, there's little change in the color. The green leaves on the trees usually turn yellowish and then fall off. We have our magnificent maples here in Ontario in all varieties, and they sound forth the, the change of one season into the next. And perhaps I have noticed the vibrant fall colors a little bit more this year because, well, I've been working from home and not going out and seeing friends or family just on a few occasions. So this wonderful, magnificent blossom of color has just invaded my soul, and I hope that has been the same for you. And we social distance, or physical distance, as some people say, we don't get to be together unless it's by Zoom or by FaceTime. Now, a few weeks ago, just as the colors started to change on some of the treetops in my neighborhood, the first of the reds started to appear. And I was walking my dog with a friend. And in our conversation, which often tends to go from nonsense talk to, and really to the, from the sublime to the ridiculous, my friend all of a sudden stated, I am just so tired of this pandemic. I don't have the freedom to do what I want, to do what I'm used to doing. Well, I was empathetic. I am a pastor, after all. Then I asked my friend, what freedoms are you missing? And my friend responded, well, I can't go out for dinner with my friends like I used to, or I just can't drop by at my friend's house and have a cup of tea or coffee or other drink and so that we can chat. I really miss these two things, she said. Oh, I stated, I responded, what about having the freedom to walk freely without much worry of harm? What about living in our country where we get to have a say, albeit through the democratic process of being able to vote or call our local politicians and speak our minds? What about our freedom of speech? My friend immediately stated, Oh, I see where you're going to go with this. And I then said, what about the freedom we have to worship without any threat or harm or danger due to our faith traditions or beliefs? What about having an abundance of food and a roof over our heads and friends that we can connect with by phone or by Zoom or FaceTime or whatever other means that helps us to connect? through physical distancing. Again, my friend said, oh, here you go again, on your soapbox about how great everything is and how we should be thankful. 
We continued our walk for a few more moments in silence. And then when the conversation did pick up again, there was a brand new subject. Perhaps it was a discussion like this that you've had with a family member or a friend. Perhaps it was a discussion like this with Udaya or Sintage, where having, or even worse, a terrible a disagreement about Paul's teachings, as was read by Al from Philippians 4, verses 1 to 9. There are the two women that Paul writes about in this part of the letter, Yodiah and Sintiche, two women of prominence, perhaps benefactors of Paul. Now, we remember that Paul is in prison at the time of writing this letter to the church in Philippi. Paul instructs the two to take their disagreement to the church. Let all help with this disagreement, so that they can become like-minded in God, so that they who have struggled with the work of the gospel come together and rejoice in the Lord always. Now, that is somewhat unfamiliar to us, isn't it? If we had a disagreement with any friend, to bring the disagreement to the church for the community of faith to be part of the solution But that's what Paul is asking them to do, to help the community through their relationships, through prayer, through studying the Word, through supporting each other on their respective journeys, so they will be like-minded in the Lord. As theologian and prominent preacher, now deceased Fred Craddock wrote in the Interpretation of Scripture series, That is what Paul wants these two to do, to come to the church, the people, so that they can be helped. Paul's view of the early church was to be in relationship to one another. And as Craddock writes, Paul's view of the church is being members of one another, meaning laying before each other the joys, the sorrows, the burdens, and the issues that need resolution. The membership ministers to each other, including to their pastor. Now, I admit that seems very strange since most of us want to keep our struggles, our disagreements, and problems private. And certainly that is understandable. That's the way our society is today. We have privacy laws now that govern what we can say and not say, what can be shared and not shared. Only shared if permission is granted to inform others publicly. The letter to the people of Philippi is filled with wonderful news rather than the chastisement And in some ways, Paul's reasoning for the other people, the churches in Rome, the church in Galilee, and so forth, to come to the Word, to be followers of Christ. But this letter, the letter to the Philippians, is filled with good news, the good news of Jesus' redeeming love, the incarnation and salvation for you and me, for the people of Philippi. I encourage you to read all four chapters of this letter to the Philippians. If you've not done so before, I encourage you to do that. Take some time this weekend. And if you've read it before, I encourage you to go back and read it again. It is as though Paul is the cheerleader of the year and proclaims that good news, something to give thanks in our time while we work through this pandemic, encouraging all of us to be in a supporting and caring relationship with one another. Rejoice in the Lord, 
Paul proclaims to the two women that have a disagreement, for there is nothing to worry about. Go to God in prayer and supplication of thanksgiving. Paul then concludes this paragraph with the blessing that you and I might have heard or used in the past. May the peace of God that surpasses all understanding guard our hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. There is the good news for you and me. That is God's grace being experienced in a blessing for everyone this Thanksgiving weekend. Now, it is time during our Thanksgiving celebrations, whether you're doing it in person with the one that you share your home with or by Zoom or FaceTime with your loved ones, whether they are near or far, let us give God our thanks. Now, I will not get into the debate on whether or not we should be having our Thanksgiving feast together with our family or friends, as the premier of our province has requested that we don't do that. We only do it in person with the person that we share our home with. That also comes from our public health units. Fortunately for me, I have technology at my fingertips, and I will be Zooming, I think Zooming is the proper verb, to share my thanks with family and friends. It will be a time to come together to rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice, just as Paul wrote to the people of Philippi. I hope you will share your blessings and your rejoicing with family and friends Or maybe it will even be a new friend that you have been in contact with during the closing of in these past months, that you've been in contact with as you were reaching out to neighbors and friends. Or maybe it's a family member that you have not been in contact with for years. I encourage you to reach out and share the good news of how you will be rejoicing And by having those people in your life, as part of your life story, this Thanksgiving is admittedly very different than many we've celebrated before. And as many of us stay at home, I hope you enjoy your turkey or your tofu turkey or whatever it is that you will have on your plate as you talk by telephone or by Zoom or by FaceTime or maybe it's smoke signals if that's all you can produce. But it is a time to share our blessings and to give thanks for this past year or since the last time you shared thanks with family and friends. Wouldn't it be a different world, a different place, a remarkably different place if we shared what we are grateful for and give thanks to God more often than we do. What do I give thanks this Thanksgiving for and for all the days of my life? First and foremost, for the love of God and love of my family both near and far. I give thanks for the friends who care, respect, support, and love me as I do them. Those friends who see and experience life different from me, perhaps the way my friend experiences her lack of freedom. And then I extend my prayers for her freedom and for all people that feel like they are restrained in their actions during this pandemic as we try to stay stay safe. This Thanksgiving, I also give thanks for the wonder, wonderful fall colors, God's wonderful creation, enough food to sustain me, to live in a wonderful city that is diverse with many ethnicities and races, and thankful for the choices we get to make in this wonderful country we call Canada.
Canada. I rejoice in the Lord for my call here in ministry with Maple Grove United to meet and experience God's grace in our lives and for the purpose of how we are all called to serve. We are called to serve and to follow. I give thanks for the wonderful journey called life and God's grace the love of Jesus Christ, and the joy of the Holy Spirit that fills my mind, my heart, and my soul. I give thanks that you are keeping well, and that you will not, or you may have already made the decision for you and yours that keeps everyone safe this Thanksgiving holiday weekend. Friends in Christ, Let us give thanks again and again this Thanksgiving and every day for God's blessings in our lives. What will you give thanks for when you are either Zooming or FaceTiming or on the phone with family or friends? Thanks be to God. Amen. This Thanksgiving comes in a very complicated time in our lives. We celebrate the gifts of God's good earth which sustains us, as well as the labor of those that have kept us supplied with these gifts. Now, some in our community have lost so much through the pandemic. Others are grateful for sustaining gifts like friendship more than ever before. Today, we bring what we can share through PAR, through the online donation button at the bottom of the web pages, or through the checks that have been mailed into Maple Grove. It's that that we give thanks for. Your offering is graciously received and welcomed so that we can continue our ministry here at Maple Grove and the mission of Christ's church in the greater community that we serve. It may be difficult for a lot of people this Thanksgiving, and so we want to share those gifts that you have offered. Thanks be to God. Friends, I invite you to join me as we say together our offering blessing. Gracious God, we present our gifts to you as tokens of our thanksgiving and for all that we have received from you. Bless the gifts that we offer and multiply them just as Jesus multiplied a few loaves and fishes to bless others. Use our gifts to share your love in our community and around your world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I invite you into a time of prayer. Prayers for ourselves, our friends, our neighbors. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, for all things that make life good. And pray that all people will share in the blessings we know. For the world, for the wonders of earth, sea, and sky. For beauty in nature and wildlife. For the rhythm of the days and seasons. We give you thanks, O God, and ask that all people share such blessings. For waters that refresh and sustain life for soil that is fertile and rich, for those who tend crops and care for harvests, for those who produce, deliver, and market our food, and especially for those working tirelessly during the pandemic. We give you thanks, O God, and ask that all people share such blessings. 
for our days of work and strength to do it, for the different gifts and talents you have given us, for challenges met, especially during months of pandemic anxiety, and for moments of leisure and rest when you restore us. We give you thanks, O oh God, and ask that all people share such blessings. For human life, for talking and thinking together, working on problems and plans, for the burdens and joys shared, for relationships that give life meaning, whether enjoyed face to face or at a distance. We give you thanks, O God, and ask that all people such blessings. For our circle of family and friends, for children and their curiosity and joy, for the insight that comes with patience and experience, and for events shared, even at a distance, and the memories cherished. We give you thanks, O God, and ask that all people such blessings. For your care and grace in times of anxiety, doubt, and grief. For healing in times of illness, confusion, and distress. For rejuvenating strength and vision in times of renewal. For scientific knowledge and discovery to confront disease and improve health. We give you thanks, O God, and ask that all people such blessings for the trust we have that you hear each prayer and you know every need, that you love and care for each soul and body, and you walk with us through all our days and seasons. We give you thanks, O God, and ask that all people share such blessings. Now we turn to you, O God, with the words that Jesus taught his followers to pray, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to join me as we sing our closing hymn. Let us sing with thanks and praise to God.
Friends, you have met God revealed in unexpected places. Go forth to share God's good news with others. Go forth knowing that you lack nothing to be a servant of God. May the God of timeless gifts, surprises, and revelations go with you on your journey. Go forth now with the love of God, the the grace of Jesus Christ, and the joy of the Holy Spirit for your journey this day and forevermore. Amen.